takes me, it's a privilege. Please never lose sight of that. The moment you lose sight that you are just privileged by God to be what you are, you start having problems. Many fall because they forget, I'm just a privileged participant in God's grace. So I thank you for the privilege of being with you. And like Pastor, I call him Pastor T, you call him Pastor Tilly, but and, and his lovely wife, meeting for the, I think the first time, thank you for what you're doing here. For such a time as this, as God put you here. And when I hear the story of your name, that you, it's such a testimony. King's borough, that he is in charge of the borough. He is the king of it. Be proud of that name. And don't just let people call or you mention that name. Leave that name. That we belong to the king's borough. He is king over here and you're part of that. Uh, I don't take those things lightly. In all my work, every opportunity I get, you must understand why you were given. Some of you have names that your parents give you. You were given those names for such a time as this. Some of you have lost understanding of why you were named the way you were named. Some of you don't even appreciate anymore why you are called a name such as Temitokwe. Temitokwe in my language means there's a lot about me to thank God for. Yet you live your life as, there's, as if there's nothing to thank God for. As simple as that, there's power in it. Because every time your name is declared, it's making a statement to God. Yet you don't know it. You don't understand it, so you are not living it. You are existing in it, but you are not living in it. Stop existing. Leave. And many in these times are existing, but they are not living. You must start to live. And don't let anyone tell you that because of your background, Nothing good can come out of you. It doesn't matter what your background is. Your back doesn't have to be on the ground. Hallelujah. You might have come from the ground, but you are not grounded. I like that uh, sketch. Oh, I like the faith avenue. That's what it's all about. You have left a time and a season when you were somebody. And that person died. And you are now in a time and a season. But you are still living as if you are in that time that once upon a time you were in. You need to shift. Once upon a time you were living as a failure. No hope. Wretched. Everybody condemns you. Nothing good can come out of you. But times have changed for you. You are in a new season. But some people still want to call you that name that you used to be. Some people want to still keep you in that time and season. They still want to keep referring to that time and season. And when they call, you're still answering them. Stop answering them because that person died. That season has gone. You are in a new season. And that's some of the times where some of you are locked in a time zone. But God has moved you on. You are in a time zone of where everything, they looked at you as a failure. But God has moved you to a place whereby you can now be successful. But in your mind and in your heart, you're still living a failure. Come on, wake up. You're in a new season. I start by, I don't know if you got able to get the slide. I don't know. At times I don't, I don't follow the slide, but I try. Christian concern, we also have a, a, center, a Christian legal center. Public policy, a lot of work we do in there, but also we fight for a lot of the Christians who are persecuted for their faith in this country. You probably see us on the news all the time, whether it's the woman wearing the cross or the Christian who prayed and was dismissed, or it's a foster parent who will not put children, um, teach them homosexuality, or it's a judge who refused, um, a magistrate who refused to put children in same-sex marriage, or it's a young man in... Sheffield University, who, refused, who said something about what the Bible says about homosexuality and was thrown out of his master's degree. We have tons of cases. We have a book, so I hope we have enough here, called Our Case Summaries. You will be shocked at the amount of Christians in this country who have been persecuted because of their faith. 
We've lost count. We just do the work. And we don't charge for it. But that means we're challenging government all the time. We're in Europe. We're everywhere. We're, we're, we're traveling the world. Because it's the same devil everywhere. Might have different faces, but it's the same devil. We do a lot of policy, trying to ensure that righteous decrees are held at the heart of government. Very important for us to do that. Because this country has a Christian heritage that is so profound. Hallelujah. But there's, there's a lot of effort to make it more secular and humanistic. But the church has to speak out on that. And because of that, we produce so many materials. Everything out there today, you can have for free. Because it's important that when I speak to you, we always give you a reference point everywhere we go. And I'll talk to you about some of the materials we've brought for you. So much that the church in this season, our people are afraid to preach. They are afraid to share the gospel. Many times they call us because preachers are arrested. They arrest them. And we have to go to court or to go to the police to let them go. Because we actually have a law in this country that allows you to preach and ask people to refrain from a way of life and to critique people. But even the police don't get it. I went to Scotland Yard one, I met one of the commissioner of police and said to him, you're wasting my time, wasting the time, taxpayers' money. Stop arresting these people for preaching. Whether they preach against homosexuality or anything, the law says they have a right to tell people to refrain from a way of life and to critique it. And we're saying, well, I don't know about that. I know about section five. What I say, it's there. It's 29 JA. It's in there. So I made sure I went there. I don't critique without a solution. So I went there with a page and gave it to him. And he read it. And he said, I must put my hands up. I didn't even know this. And I'm going to send this to all my guys on the beat. So that we're working together on it. I said, thank you. And based on it, you will find in your pack, I've left something there called Christian Freedoms. It gives you the right to preach out there. And hold it with you. And any man starts to stop you, read it out to them. So do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed of the gospel. As we're doing our work, we realize many Christians are now afraid to express their faith publicly. So we started a campaign called Not Ashamed. And I've brought every one of you a copy uh, of a wristband. The wristband does say Not Ashamed. And it has a cross on it. We have Christian policemen, Christian politicians, professionals, doctors, everywhere they're wearing this wristband. Because all he says is not ashamed of the gospel. Not, not, not ashamed with a cross. So people will always ask you, what are you not ashamed of? It gives you the opportunity to engage them. And you show them, I'm not ashamed of the cross of Christ. Of the gospel of Christ. You can have one free. There's more than enough, I'm sure, for everyone. If it's not in your pack, get one at the back. There are a lot of materials in here that we've left for you. Um, to use because the Bible tells us that we, we, we perish because of lack of what? But you know that it's not only because you lack the knowledge. Also what? Rejected knowledge. Are you hearing me? That's the most painful one. If you don't have something, you don't have it and you trust God and hope to have it. But the most painful one is if you read that passage in Hosea again, it says not only because you lack the knowledge, because you reject the knowledge. So at times people have actually give you the knowledge, but you say, I don't want it. And so we put a lot of information out to every one of you to ensure that you are in the know. Are you with me? Because you're living in a season whereby everybody wants to go with the flow. You understand what I mean by that? Let's just go with the flow. Let me tell you this. If you ever go with the flow and you are not in the know, you will be blown like the snow. You know how light the snow is? The snow is so what? It's flaky and light. Always be in the no. Otherwise, you'll be blown just like that. Don't just go with the flow. Pastor will announce later on, but there's this form there. All I need is your email. Every week, to hundreds of thousands across the globe, they get our email to tell you what's going on in this country as Christians and what action you can take to make your voice heard. We have done all the work. All we're asking you is let us keep you informed. You know, and that's all we need. Please, if we can get that back from you before we go, I'll be very happy because you need to be informed. Why do I say that? The next slide. The next one. 
this is our mission, but let's go on to the message. The next one. This is the reason why I'm, I started with that. The next line there says, interpretations determine what? Impact. If you ever misinterpret what you see and hear, you will always apply the wrong impact. If God has given me Pastor T as a friend and I interpret him as an enemy, I'm in trouble, isn't it? So God gives you an avenue, which is what will prosper your marriage, and you see it as a blockage. You interpret it as a blockage. You're in trouble. To know and understand the times you are, you have to understand that interpretations determine what? Impact. You see your wife, and you interpret her as a prostitute. You're in trouble. You see the head of your home and you interpret him as the slave. You're in trouble. It's important that you interpret what you see appropriately. If you go on to the next slide. Interpretations are essential and crucial to knowing and understanding the times. We do well to ensure that our interpretations are correct. The next slide. In Matthew 16. 5 to 12. Here is Jesus warning his disciples about the behavior and the person of the Pharisees and Sadducees. But he used the word the, that they should be careful of the leaven of the Pharisees. They misunderstood, they misinterpreted it because mentioning leaven means bread. And at that point in time, the disciples didn't have food to eat. They didn't have bread. And so they thought Jesus was talking about, they said, oh, thank God. He knows we're hungry. He knows we don't have bread. And Jesus looked at them and said, are you guys crazy? You stood by me and I fed 5,000, I fed 4,000. How do you think I'll be worried about you not having bread? They, misunderstood, they misinterpreted it. He quickly corrected them. I'm talking to you that you need to be careful about this kind of people. He immediately reprimanded them. The next slide. It's very common for us to interpret everything based on where we are. You saw the sketch earlier on? She interpreted receiving a miracle based on where she was. And so she was applying the wrong things. The many of you where you are right, right now is a place whereby you, everything you see is telling you there is no hope. Where you are right now is in the midst of a storm. But that's exactly where God wants you because there is a blessing in that storm. You just need to interpret that storm appropriately. That's why if you go on to Matthew 16, the same 16, Peter, Jesus said to them, who do people say I am? You are the Christ. And God began to what? Commend this man because he interpreted Christ well. And not soon after he has done the brilliant job, Jesus now said, now that you know who I am, let me now tell you what I must go through. And he began to tell them how he will be crucified. And then Peter feeling so big about himself. Now that he thinks he's somebody. Misinterpreted what Jesus was saying and began to reprimand Jesus. Jesus had to reprimand him strongly. Get thee behind me what? Satan. Why do you think Jesus used those words? Because the most important thing for his disciples to now understand. They were what? Misinterpreting it. And he knew that if they misinterpret it, they will apply what? The wrong things. So he had to correct them straight away. And I'm telling you the real deal right now. I'm telling you so that when you see them slapping me, kicking me, beginning to beat me, you just let them do what they have to do because that is my cross. That's not the time for you to pull out the sword. As much as Jesus said it, Peter still pulled out his sword and cut somebody's ears because he was misinterpreting what was happening. And many of us are in that situation in the world that we're living today. Next slide. Luke 12. Let's go to the next slide. Go on. Luke 12 says this. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud, Rising in the west, immediately you say it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say it's going to be hot, 
And it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Yes, some of you, you're so good, you can even smell everything and understand it. You can smell almost everything and say, ah, that sister is an enemy. Very quick. But there is a present time you're in. Do you understand it? I got a call one day. I was in the boardroom in my office. And it was from the Bishop of London. And it was an invite to meet with Prince Charles. I had to interpret that call very quickly and appropriately. So when the call came in and I said, why would I have to meet Prince Charles? And the person on the other side was like, I said Prince Charles. I said, I heard you the first time. I am not defined by meeting Prince Charles. Hallelujah. I'm already defined by my God. And I meant every word of it. I'm not important. I'm, not, I'm no disrespect to the royalty, but I don't sit down and feel, and feel important meetings where we drink tea and say I met with somebody. I don't have time for that. And you'll see the reason why I say so, such things. I don't have time for it. I've sat with the last tri three prime ministers in 10 Downing the Street, the last two mayors, serious conversations. You know, we are the prophetic and authoritative voice of God. And when you get and God gives you the opportunity, you know why you're there. And you speak the voice of God. I am a prince of a true king that reigns and rules. And except you are part of that kingdom, I don't care what prince you are. You are a lesser prince to me. You don't understand what I'm saying? I'm not just talking to you. I believe what I'm talking about, and I live it. And that's why I had to interpret and say, why is he calling me? What is the purpose of the call? Because if I misinterpret it, I'm in trouble. There's something called compromise by association. Be careful of it. By just associating with people, you are compromised. So I said to them, if I have a meeting with him and I'm able to share what God has put in my heart, I will be at the meeting. If not, go to the next person. And I was saying, fine. They went away and said, fine, we'll have the meeting. And we had the meeting. And I did have my time with him. And I did ask him my question. Yes, he put him on a very hot seat. And everybody was nervous in the room because I asked my question. There was only about 11 of us. And they were trying to pinch me to say, maybe you shouldn't ask. I said, leave me alone. The man is the one who invited me. And I'll have my day. I'm giving him what God has given me. The question I asked him was based on Christianity because he's the defender of the faith. And I wanted him to clarify why he wants to be defender of faith. In his own words, he said he never said it. It was a lie. I didn't doubt him, but I had to let him explain that to me. I wasn't condemning him, but all I was saying is, Royal Highness, being defender of the faith, which is part, you are here to the sovereign rule. If you decide to speak for the Christian faith, no one can question you in this country because it comes with your role. That's all I was trying to tell him. They can't touch him, not the law, not the police, no one. And he said, oh, I said, yes. I might never meet him again. But I had to interpret that moment appropriately. You have to understand your season. That's why it was said of Esther, for such a time, she had to get it right. Otherwise, that time comes and it's gone. The next slide. In Genesis, the children of God have been told by, to their forefather, you will be in slavery for 400 years. Those 400 years are not time to plan coup. They're not time to find escape strategies because it's a waste, time, waste, waste of your what? Energy. It's a time to say this is where we're going to be for 400 years. Like in Babylon, 70 years, pray for the peace of where you are held what? Captive. You have to understand. If you don't understand and know the time, you will be applying the wrong thing. For 400 years, it's not the time to try and get out of Egypt because it's a waste of your time and energy. It's a time to consolidate and make the time. But if you don't understand why you're there, pleasing God is okay, even when it displeases you. You understand what I'm saying to you? Even though... Pleasing God displeases you. So you still have to please him. The times he puts you in a place and you feel that you're uncomfortable or you're meant to be there. And I want to encourage you as church. I, I, I get tired of church members 
jumping from two men from one church to the other. Stop it. Thinking that because you are in one church and you do, it doesn't, is God called you to be there? And I'm talking to you from experience. If you are called to be there, make sure you stay there and make sure you do what you're called to do there and finish it and do it well until God says move, don't move. Because if you move, a 40-day journey can take you 40 years because you misinterpret what I'm, the time that you're going Even Jesus said, Father, is it possible I don't take this cup? Because he was feeling this is pressure. But he said, not my will, but what? And the Bible says immediately he said that strength came out of him. He wasn't fancying what he was about to get into. He wasn't really liking the environment. You have been there, haven't you, as well? But you are meant to be there. There is a carrying before there is a wearing. You have to be able to carry your cross before you can wear the crown. Many of you want to wear the crown, but you don't want to carry the cross. It doesn't work. There is a story before there is a glory. Many people like the glory, but they don't want the story. Any glory, in fact, no glory exists without a story. So when you talk to young people and you keep telling them about these glorious things, please leave the glory aside. Tell them the story. The glory will come automatically. Don't build up your children in this season or your young people or yourself to be prominent. Build yourself to be influential. We have too many prominent leaders who are not influential. But what our time and season needs is influential people. My experience has taught me that when you are influential, prom prom prominence does what? Follows you. But when you take it the other way around, it's trouble. That's why I said the greatest of all is the servant. Because it is your service that authenticates your leadership. Your leadership does not authenticate your, your service. It's your service that authenticates what? Your leadership. Whenever, next slide. In this season that you're in, as you interpret things, you're looking for answers, you're looking for solutions to situations and circumstances and problems. And I tell you this, please. Answers and solutions can be wrong. So no matter what you're going through, only apply truth. Did you hear what I just said? Answers can be what? Wrong. Solutions can be what? Wrong. Truth is never wrong. No matter what you're going through, find God's truth for that situation. Apply it and you can never go wrong. Truth always prevails in time. Too many times you are looking for solutions and answers and even, yes, at times they are right, oftentimes they are wrong. But if you find the truth to the situation, you can never, that's why they call God himself is the truth. To every situation and circumstance and problem, there is a truth in the Bible for it. When you find it, apply it and see what God will do. In the times you are living in, you need the truth because of the times you are in. The next slide. You must know the season you are in and the reason for your season. This is very important. If you are to prosper in what God has sent you, it's important you know your season and why that season is meant to be there. If you don't, there's a problem. Jesus knew the reason for his season. So he lived to die for the purpose for why he was here. They asked him, who were you? The king of the Jews He said, to that end. You understand me? You know, some of you, if you are from Nigeria here, many of you cannot be like the mother of Jesus. How many of you can stand back and see your son being kicked, slapped, spat at? You're standing and your son is being killed in front of you. Well, I'm from a place in Nigeria called Ekizi State. They are from a tribe of people called Yorubans. If you try and kick any of their children like that, the way their wrapper will fly off from their waist into the air, automatically land on their waist back, and they will tie it. And they will tell you, you will kill me and this boy here today. But Mary understood the reason for her season. And she also understood the reason for the season of her son. 
So she knew that this was the son's word, cross. And she had to do what? Stay back. And let the will of God be. There are times you are interfering too much in the life of your children. That you have to let them be. Even in your own life. That you need to step back. Let them be. Let them have their experiences. That's how God is going to shepherd them up. That's how the strength will come. But you want to protect them from all the experience. Stop it. Some of you send your children to university. You even want to see the university exam with them. Those of you who, are, who came here like when I came, one, most of us didn't have our papers in this country. So you have to pay foreign school fees. You have to work at the same time. You have to study. And you cannot fail and repeat. And no mom or dad came from Nigeria to help you with your university work. And you, get, and you came out well and you're here. Why is that supposed to be different with your children? Leave that child. Let that child find his or her journey and her own story or his own story for such a time as this. The next slide tells you in Ecclesiastes 3, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to live, a time to love, a time to battle, and a time to be still. The next slide. The next slide. Find something worth what? Dying for. I have too many people who have something to live for, but very few people who have something to die for. This faith in Jesus Christ that you have, are you ready to die for it? Because if it's not worth dying for, it's not worth believing in. I've seen people after people whose livelihood have been taken in this country because they stand for Jesus. White, black, we have it there. Go on our website and see them. Different cultures, different careers. And they've stood. Your job is what you're paid to do. You can be sacked, you can be dismissed, you can, be, you can retire. Your work is why you are born. You never retire from your work. You can slow down as you go older, but Jesus knew why he was born. Do you know why you're born? Do you know why you're here? It's important that you know why you're here. Otherwise, you'll be jumping from pillar to post. Whatever you compromise, did you see that? To gain, you will lose. And whatever you tolerate, you will never change. Next slide. Next slide, that's fine. The next slide. Do you know what time it is that you are now living in? And what's your part in this time and, and season is? I give you four Fs. Four. It's important for you in Christ Jesus to find your place, to fit in your place, to function in your place, and to be fruitful. Four Fs. Find, fit, function, fruitful. Some people find their place and they dance around it forever. Thank God I found, I found my place. And they keep rejoicing just finding it. But they never do what? Fit into it. Some people find it and fit into it and they stay there as well. I found it, I'm fitted into it, and they just keep running around it. But they are not what? Functioning. So some people find it, they fit in it, they are functioning, but they are not what? Fruitful. So it's not either or, it's all of. You find it, you fit into it, you're functioning it, and make sure you're functioning what? Fruitfully. I always struggle with this message, and the reason I struggle is there's so much to, disc to talk to you about. But I'm going to try and make it as brief, as quick as I can. The season you're living in is called an aggressive but subtle age of deception. It is very subtle, but it's also what? Aggressive. But it's still what? Deception. It's an age whereby they complicate to implicate. They take something so simple, they complicate it, and they get everybody what? Implicated by it. It is a season of selling lies, telling lies, and clothing it with good arguments. They tell you a lie, they sell you a lie, they clothe it with good arguments. Where did it start? It started in the Garden of Eden. The devil, the serpent, sold to Adam and Eve, disobey God. Eat the fruit. 
He sold them a lie. He told them a lie. Now let me ask you a question. What was the truth he clothed the news? When you do, your eyes will be what? Open. When their eyes opened, it was open. You see the subtleness? You see the aggressiveness? Deception. That's the age we're living in right now. The next slide. Keep going. Keep going. Democracy now in all the world has replaced God in leadership. People think that if we are democratic, then there's a solution to the nation. It's a lie. Democracy of its own is not enough. It's glorified humanism. Whereby, you want to live in a world where everything in your life depends on men. You know that's what democracy means. They make the decision and that is it. I don't want to live in that world. I want to go quickly. To live in a world whereby men make decision. And what they say goes. And that's the end of it. No. That is not enough in itself without God's input. That's why I can say to you right here, right now. I won't have time to read it, but you can get it on our website. They are talking about a, a, Christ, um, a political and economic perspective to the EU. But they are not telling you about the Christian perspective. Hallelujah. Go and read the Christian perspective. I don't have time today to read it. It's on our website. I have copies here. And you will soon find out what, what you need to vote for. You will soon find which of them fits the agenda of God. Europe is not democratic. It's not democratic. Those guys who make the laws there, you can't sack them. You don't elect them. They are unelected. And they will make laws to rule you. That's, it's not, it's not, it's, that's how they are. Forget your sovereignty. They now determine, and you cannot, like I said to you, you don't elect them. What is democracy about? You, the people, are in charge, aren't you? Even if you elect somebody for five years, when you're tired of them, there's an opportunity in five years' time to do what? Get somebody else in. You don't get that from Europe. I'm not going to talk much about that. The next slide. This is the age you're living in. It's a new normal, militant, secularism, age of reason, humanistic, enlightened. Everything now is about equality. Your children say, I know me rights. <laughs> Everything is about rights. Rights, 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 rights. So rights and human rights is the argument now on which a lot of atrocities is being hung. Let me give you some of those atrocities. Let me start with the ladies. Ladies, do you know that your womb is the beginning of worlds? That is the place where most worlds begin. I am a world as you see me. You are a world. But it starts from the womb of the woman. I was waiting on the Mother's Day one day, and the Lord gave me the definition of womb. W-O-M-B. World of mother and baby. That's why there's so much attack. Your womb has become one of the most insecure places in this generation. They are liberalizing abortion. I don't condemn people who go through abortion in this country. Why? Not because I support it, but because it's a lifestyle. And people easily get into it, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. They tell you what is in your womb is a pound of flesh. But the Bible tells you that before you were in your mother's womb, God knew you. If you existed before you got to the womb, so what happened when you got into the womb? And this nation has killed almost 8 million in the last 42 years. That is a lot of blood. I have children who their parents refuse to abort them. They are excelling today. How many of them have we killed? In the name of women's right. The Bible says it's not a pound of flesh. God knew that child there before he got there. He said God knitted it together. And they find an excuse for you. And you all fall for it. You now have in this country called, something called HFE. Human Fertility and Embryology Act. Is the act whereby they can toy with your womb. Toy with your womb means now we have what they call animal-human hybrid. Eggs of animals with human beings mixed together. They can allow to do it if they meet the criteria. What is the good argument for it? They said in the name of scientific development. America tried what you called three-parent babies. They've stopped it now. Britain is now championing three-parent babies. Three parent babies mean you can't have a child. We'll take this yolk from this woman's egg, remove it, find a woman who has a healthy egg, 
remove the yoke from her, put it in that woman, because two women already combined, and take it and add it to a man. What kind of human being are you going to have to give back to? And it's in the name of your rights. It is in the name of your rights. It is in the name of scientific development. But I tell you, it is deception. The Bible says we help people to live until they die. We're trying to pass in this country. Thank God it's not yet passed. Euthanasia. They call it assisted dying. Helping people to die. He said, for terminal illness. The truth of the matter is, when they say they want to do these things and they give you safeguards, the safeguards are not what the paper is written in. The people who were the architects of the abortion act in 1967, when they saw how many millions have been killed in 40 years, they all regretted it. And said, we were trying to protect backstreet abortion, but we never knew it would happen like this. People will exploit it. Do you know that a pain that you are going through right now, in two days' time, you can be better. If you have the op 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 option when you were in severe pain to say, kill me, you will have to, some people will take it. No. When God is ready to take you, the one who gives is the one who can take. Next slide. Let me talk to you about, I won't talk to you much about same-sex marriage. I won't go into it. You all know what we're going through in this country. And you know what the Bible says about it. And right now, even in the church, they're embracing it. That's the world you're living in. But now, they're adding to it every day. When we started, they would say lesbian and gay and bisexual. Now, they call themselves LGBTIQ. Yes, it's now Q. Every day, and that's the time you're living in. It's lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, the I is uh, inter intersex, and the Q is questioning. What is it? What is that? <laughs> that is the world you're living in. And they're saying they have the same rights as you. And if you don't agree with it, many people are losing their jobs. The next gay pride this year, this, this year in London, they are going to fly their rainbow on parliament flag. Yes, it's been approved. I, I didn't bring books today. They are already teaching your children in school with those books. Oh, yes, they are. Some of you send the children to school. You don't ask the school, what are you teaching my kids? Leave this here today, sex education, go to your school, ask the school, can I see a copy of sex education curriculum? I want to know exactly what you are teaching my children. Children are innocent as you are allowed to grow as children. You are exposing them too early. And then we are wondering why they have problems. Some people call themselves now, you know, bestiality? They have their own group now. And pedophiles. Pedophiles are saying, stop being hard on us. Because homosexuals say their situation is a sexual orientation. So pedophiles are now saying that their own situation as well is a sexual orientation. That they are attracted to children sexually. And they are compiling journals for it. That is the world you're living in. Those who are attracted to animals are now doing the same. They call themselves zoos. It's all online. Z-O-O-S. These are your realities, I'm telling you, church. And it's not only happening in this country. I was in a prayer meeting for women yesterday in Bohemwood. I had women testifying what these things happening to their children in schools in Nigeria. And the church is quiet and silent. You say nothing about it. What does it take for evil people to prosper? For so-called good people to say what? Nothing. Some people are tired in the West for being able. You have two hands, you have two legs. And you're not happy about it. Now they are considering that you can get rid of it. So they call them transabled. I'm tired of this hand. I don't need it anymore. It's so they take it off for you. It's sickness. The fiercest battle that we are yet to face is the battle of what? Rights. You know, I want to finish on talking about all these things. Why is it relevant to you? Transgender people now, you see a woman looks more a woman than a proper woman, but he was, she was born a man. This is what we do. I see some of them and I'm like, sorry, Miss, how are you? Whatever. Then later they tell me, he was 
born a, a man. I said, this, this is not, no, 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 it's not possible. This is a woman. I said, no, that person is a man. They've changed everything that even if you look at them naked, everything has been changed. And let me ask you a question. If somebody is like that, how then do you know? Young people, you want to get married. How then do you look at a woman and, and know that she was born a woman and not a man? You will say to me, well, pastor, I will go and look for, ask for their birth certificate. Then they knew that, so they went ahead of you. Yes, you, you got the birth certificate. Now they've introduced something called blank gender. Particularly in Germany and Australia, they are leading it. Blank gender means you have your children, but you don't put their gender in their certificate. The children put their gender when they are ready and decide who they are, whether male or female. Now you tell me. So birth certificate cannot help you. You are looking at the body you still don't know. What is the thing that you need? Discernment. You will need the Holy Spirit more than your, your parents have. That by just looking at somebody, you can tell who this person. Interpretation does what? Determines impact. You must be shocked in God. I say to my young ladies, a woman must, a girl must be so lost in God, a man has to go through God to find her. Because if that man has to go to God to get to you, it's real. Please, I'm not, these things are serious matters, I'm telling you. The, when you marry, they say wedlock. Is that not what they call it? Now you are trying to introduce a new thing. That means you are locked in it. They introduce what they call wed leases. Wed leases means that you go and you agree the lease, the marriage lease. Whether it's for five years or eight years or nine years. And then you, if you want to continue, you go and renew it. This is the world that you are living in. This is the season that you are in. What did I tell you? And all is in the name of what? Your rights. Let me tell you what. Can you show me that, please? The next slide. Look at what this, your prime minister said. So I don't support gay marriage despite being a conservative. I support gay marriage because I am conservative. Next slide. He said, many other countries are going to want to copy this. So I am going to export the bill team out. So he has given you the same thing, and now he wants to export it to other countries. And he says somewhere there that um, is, is a, and, and I, I'm personally proud of this. I think I'm probably the only conservative prime minister who's taking this step. But I'm very proud to have taken it. And let me tell you where there's deception. Next slide. This is our Archbishop of Canterbury. And I don't make any regret about it, and I will say it on camera. He did a great job to go to parliament, and he voted against same-sex marriage. He did. He voted against same-sex marriage. He voted against what? Unrighteousness. Now, somebody votes like that against unrighteousness. Then in the same house, says this. Let me read it to you. It is clearly essential that stable and faithful same-sex relationships should, where those involved want it, be recognized and supported with as much dignity and the same legal effects as marriage. Second reading, that was his words. How does one say, I vote against unrighteousness and then speaks for unrighteousness? What did I call the word for you? Deception. If you are going to be hot, be hot. If you are going to be cold, be cold. A lot of these guys are playing games. You want to please everybody. If you try to please everybody, you please nobody. The next slide. I want to finish with you because you asked me what's all this about. What, what, what have I got to do with this? Keep going. This is the state of the nation that we're living in right now. And by the way, Pastor T, if anybody wants these slides, I'll give it to you to be able to forward to them. You know, this is the state of our nation today. If you read through all those things, that's exactly where we are. I'm not going to go through it. That is our reality today. It's our reality. The next slide. Next one. When the queen was on, going on the throne, look at what she swore. The Archbishop told the queen, will you, to the utmost of your power, maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel? That was a powerful oath the queen took. She agreed to. Next slide. And in the midst of it, the Abishab also said this to her when they gave her the Holy Bible. 
our gracious queen, to keep your majesty ever mindful of the law and the gospel of God as the rule for the whole life and government of Christian princes. We present you with this book, the most valuable thing that this world affords. These are the things that the queen, you know, with God, when you swear an oath, God doesn't joke with it. We are in trouble because this oath is constantly being kicked out. When you kick against the covenant of God, lawlessness come on the land. That's what they call the Achan spirit. That's why you are seeing all manners of what? Lawlessness. I won't talk about Islam today. It's another day. But I will tell you as much that in the present London you are living, we have over 100 Sharia courts in the UK. This London, this is UK. Over 100 Sharia courts. How can you have two legal systems? They marry more than one wife and will state pays for it. So, yes. What kind of law is that? For you, go and marry another person now. There's a law that says it is what? But they can do it. A taxi driver one day was taken to me, and I saw a little boy on the screen, and I was greeting the little boy. Is that your son? He said, my son. He said, where is he? He said, he's in Pakistan. I said, oh, why is he in Pakistan? I thought you have family here. Oh, it's my second marriage, and I'm trying to bring them down. Second marriage? And it's going through the law, and it's going to bring them down. And if you don't have a job, your taxpayers, you have to pay for it. This is the reality of the world you're living in. And let me talk, tell you why you are so important. The Bible says the sons of Issachar knew the times and what to do. Over 380 something thousand of them came together, but only 200 of them knew what to do. You are part of the remnants that are left for such a time as this, so that we are not as Sodom and we are not as what? Gomorrah. God only needs a few of us. Can you imagine those thousands that gathered, but only 200 knew what to do? They were experts, but they didn't know what to do. Next slide. Keep going. Keep going. Yes, keep going. Yes, keep going. Yes, go on, please. I've told you this. Keep going. Now, this is where I want to end with you. Romans 8, 19 says what? Can we all read it together? For creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Who do you think that is talking about? You. You are so ordinary, you are extraordinary. He said you are a royal priesthood. In your family, in your home, thank you, the brother that came to share the testimony about children. Even in your family, in your business, in your career, in your workplace, in your school, you are, they are waiting for you to be revealed. You are so relevant, you don't even know it. Because you are the one God is looking to, to do what he wants to do. Wake up. Don't think, you don't have to go and start somewhere big. Start where exactly you are. And begin to use what God has what, given you. It's not about numbers, it's about availability. Somebody needs you to be revealed so that they can be fulfilled. As you are being fulfilled, they are being revealed. John the Baptist had to be revealed and being fulfilled. And Jesus was what? Revealed. There's somebody waiting for you. You are in the king's borough. This community is waiting for you to be revealed. As you are being revealed in this community and being fulfilled, other people are being what? The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power might be of who? Of God. The treasure in you is Christ Jesus. Your ordinary life speaks the extraordinary life of Jesus. That's why I said you are so ordinary, you are extraordinary. You don't need the queen's OBE. I've already given you your own OBE. Ordinary but extraordinary. <laughs> that is who we are. Hallelujah. As children of God. We come humble, we come, God wants us to live a very modest, ordinary life, but in us lies what? The extraordinary. And I want you to read those things. The world cannot heal itself. Doing nothing is not an option. Anger gives birth to what? Leadership. Whatever you allow, you cannot criticize. Forget about insecurity, it only renders you useless. You must become the answer to your own prayers. Whatever you permit, you are responsible for. You can let things happen, or you can what? Make things happen. 
I'm begging you today, please. I can talk to you about a lot more. But I've come here today to challenge you. That your family needs you. Your children need you. Your cousins, your relatives, your, even your enemies need you. They need you to be revealed. Because some of your enemies are dependent on you being revealed for their salvation. So please stop keeping silent. Stop being what? Silent. Speak out and speak with confidence. There are some parks at the back and some books there. I don't have a lot of them, but we publish books. Whatever, if you get there early enough, and Abigail likes your face, or Andrew does, you can get these books. All, they are all free for you today. This book is one of our cases, Richard Scott. A doctor, many were being saved in his surgery, and they tried to fire him. But he stood his ground. Now he's running a very powerful evangelistic ministry. He decided to come to us and write his book, Christians in the Firing Line. We have written books for so many different people, and they are available there for you if you need a copy. Those of you who want to be going to politics, NCLF is a black church leaders forum. I co-authored this manifesto at the last election. Four years of work, nine areas in it that affect our black communities. We gave what God says about those areas. We gave what is happening now. We tell the government what the church will do. We tell the government what the government should do. It has exceeded our expectation. It's been used in libraries, in universities, in different foreign offices. The government, it's like you can have one. If you have enough, take a copy. We had guys come from Oxford and said to me, we write manifestos. We came to this lunch today because this is one of the best we have ever seen. Please, you have a copy of that. I'm happy that pastor was telling me that next Sunday, here you are going to celebrate the queen. And on that I want to finish because some of you have seen this book about the queen. Yes. It was another opportunity for me to put my big mouth in the matter. Because I was part of a group that wanted to put this together. And when we said we we're going to write about the queen's faith, I said to them, do you know her faith? They said, what do I mean? I said, because she says she's a Christian, you think she is? I said, do me a favor. If you want to write something about the queen's faith, please, you, we have enough people skilled here. Can they, 64 years on the throne, she speaks in Christmas and Easter and testifies about Jesus. Can you take all her quotes, most of it, then compile it in a book? And they said she's a servant queen, and let's give it, and we agreed to give it the title, The Servant Queen and the King She Serves. And I said, when we've done that, we must now take it to the queen and tell her that if Jesus really is her Lord and Savior, she needs to put her seal and write the foreword. And everybody in the room looked at me as if I've lost my mind. That how do you go to the queen? I said, why would you go to the queen? If you're not doing it, I'm not involved. How do you write about somebody's faith and the person doesn't attest, attest to it? So I, they went and they struggled to get anyone to take this to the queen. The people in the church who should have done it, all of them said, ah, I can't do it. They said, ah, no, I can't do it. But God had a way. I won't tell you the details of it. It was this same guy, one of my friends, went to see somebody, thrown out of church for adultery, repented, doing well as a barrister, and went to greet him and said, what are you doing at this time? He said, you know, myself, Adi, and some were trying to do this book for the queen, and we're struggling to get her to, to get someone to take it to her for her to seal it. And, I, and I, he's giving me a headache, and Adi he said he won't support it, except the queen puts the seal on it. And the guy said, really? He said, it's funny if you say that. My, my, my brother is the cup bearer of the queen. Cup bearers are powerful, you know. <laughs> I won't tell you the rest of it. The rest of it is that within days, look at that. That's the queen's seal. It's there, and she talks about how her own faith has affected her life. We published this in February. Now it is sold a million, only for one pound. I have a few here. If you get there early again, impress Abigail and Andrew, and you might get a copy. You can have it if you haven't got one. And let me say this to you. Having said that, I cannot still tell you what her personal relationship with God is. That's between her and God. But what would we do? We have put something out there now for generations that nobody can say she was Muslim. Nobody can say that she was pagan. Or nobody can say that she did not testify Jesus because it's in black and white. We've put it out there, and then we didn't stop there. We, I, I, I'm sorry I didn't bring the copies. We did a smaller version for children by, through scripture, um, scripture Union, so that even our children, 
they are giving them so they can know that when they grow up, the queen wrote something to testify to Jesus. And so you can't tell us a lie. And, and these are efforts that we're trying. For young people in your church, Pastor T, we have an academy called the Blue Force Academy. The Blue Force Academy, we're training the next um, Christian leaders in public life. Andrew Boba was there. Abigail, were you in we were Wilberforce as well? Twice, yes. Abigail has been in Wilberforce twice. They're Wilberforce graduates. We take about 100 young Christians, graduates. To, first year, we were in um, Oxford. Now we're in Cambridge. We take them there and bring the best minds in different fields of law, medicine, media, and we pour in them for a whole week. And then we're building an alumni of them, I think seven years on. Because you don't just talk about putting our young people in position. You have to spend to train them. So you can apply. I think this year's one is closed, but we do it every year. And the last one I will say is we have something called Safe Haven. I'm, a, I'm amazed at the amount of people who are converting in this country from Islam to Christianity. So we set up something called Safe Haven. And I'm seeing these guys, radical Muslims, saying God appeared to them. They are now Christians. But the challenge is the churches they go at times don't know how to handle them. So we're working with the churches. We help put them in safe houses. And some of them we also put indirectly with others we work with. And I'm hearing stories upon stories upon stories. And I meet them and I'm saying, wow, God. Even when we are not doing it, God is doing it. God is the one sowing the harvest. All he's asking us is to what? To reap it. If you, see the, if you hear these people's conversions, you'll be in this country. As a lot of, most, most of them, their life is under threat. In here. I can't tell details today because I'm on camera, but we have to set that up and we're doing that. Please, whatever you do, we perish because we lack what? Knowledge. The amount, I'm, I'm, I'm part of you. I'm coming back again. Amen. I will talk more and more and more. Also, make sure you add us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And visit the church website.